A lot of brothers and sisters have heard about the content of this book, but haven't actually read the book for themselves. A lot of people repeat what they hear other people say, or other camps say, that is in this book, but now you have an actual opportunity to see the quotes in the book for yourself. I didn't get a chance to show you every single quote in the book for the sake of brevity, but I did show you the most important ones. And who knows, this video may even encourage some of you brothers and sisters to go out and actually buy a copy of this book and actually read it cover to cover for yourself. A good place to get a lot of these used books that we'll be showing on this channel is a place called Strands Bookstore. If you're located in New York City, they're on 12th and Broadway in Midtown Manhattan. If you're not located in New York City, you can find them at strandsbooks.com. Now, back in the early 90s, uh, myself, Priest One Lawyer, and other brothers, when the elders used to come out with archaeology videos showing all these different books, we used to run down to the Strands Bookstore to get these books because we wanted to have them for ourselves. And it was so serious that we were in there so much that we actually got kicked out of Strands one time. Another great source for finding used or old books is eBay. If you can't find something at strands.com, try eBay. You'll have a better shot at finding it over there. Now, there is no history book that can be compared to the scriptures in any way, shape, or form. But, by reading history, you'll find that history reminds you of the scriptures. And also, by reading history, history proves the Bible itself to be a true book. The purpose of this channel is to basically show you that the information that we learned, it, as we learned it from the elders in the beginning, was right and exact pages 15 and page 16. The general picture that emerges from these fragmentary pieces of information is that of a migration of Khazar tribes and communities into these regions of Eastern Europe, mainly Russia and Poland, where at the dawn of the modern age, the greatest concentration of Jews were found. This has led several historians to conjecture that a substantial part and perhaps the majority of Eastern Jews and hence of world Jewry might be of Khazar and not of Semitic origin. The large majority of surviving Jews in the world is of Eastern European and thus perhaps mainly of Khazar origin. If so, this would mean that their ancestors came not from Jordan but from the Volga, not from Canaan but from the Caucasus, once believed to be the cradle of the Aryan race, and that genetically they are more closely related to the Hun, Uyghur, and Magyar tribes than to the seed of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Should this turn out to be the case, then the term anti-Semitism will become void of meaning based on a misapprehension shared by both the killers and their victims. The story of the Khazar Empire, as it is slowly emerging from the past, begins to look like the most cruel hoax which history has ever perpetrated. The people under Khazar suzerainty included the Bulgars, the Burtas, the Guz, who the author of this book pays a lot of attention to, the Magyar Hungarians, the Gothic and Greek colonies of Crimea, and the Slavonic tribes in the northern woodlands. Now the Guz are the white boys you know today that live in Turkey that converted to Islam, the same way the so-called white man that calls himself a Jew converted to Judaism. Same thing. Accordingly, their complexions are white, their eyes blue, their hair flowing and predominantly reddish, their bodies large, and their natures cold. Their general aspect is wild. And this is describing the tribes that we just read above. Particularly, let's talk about the Guz, who are the so-called white boys that converted to Islam. The Khazars do not resemble the Turks. They are black-haired and of two kinds. One called the Kara Khazars, black Khazars, who are swarthy, verging on deep black, as if they were a kind of Indian, and white kind, Ak Khazars, who are strikingly handsome. Yeah, right. Now we're going to quickly switch over to another book called Men Who Changed the Map, page number eight. Now I want you to follow the arrows. These are the Kara Khazars, the black Khazars, known as the Huns. Now look how dark the Huns are as opposed to the slave that they're holding on a horse. Look at the arrow. Now take a look at it from this angle. Look how dark they are 
as opposed to the slave that they're holding. Let's take a look at it from this angle. Look how dark they are. These are the Kara Karzars or the Black Karzars that the 13th tribe is talking about. But Priscius also has anecdotes to tell us about a people subject to the Huns, whom we just proved were black, whom he calls Akatazirs. That is very likely the Ag Karzars or White Karzars. So they were paying tribute to these black Huns, as distinct from the Black Karzars. The Byzantine Empire Priscius tells us tried to win this warrior race over to his side, but the greedy Karzar chieftain named Karadak considered the bribe offered to him inadequate and sided with the Huns. The Khazar army, unable to recover from the initial shock, retreated as far as the Volga. The Cajun was forced to ask for terms. Marwan, in accordance with the routine followed in other conquered countries, requested the Cajun's conversion to the true faith. The Cajun complied, but his conversion to Islam must have been an act of lip service for no more is heard of the episode in the Arab or Byzantine sources, in contrast to the lasting effects of the establishment of Judaism as the state religion which took place a few years later. From a chronological point of view, the next event to be discussed should be the conversion of the Khazars to Judaism around AD 740. This is the book of Ahmad. Ibn Fadlan, Ibn al-Abbas, Ibn Rasid, Ibn Hamad, an official in the service of General Muhammad Ibn Suleiman, the ambassador of Caliph al maktudir to the king of the Bulgars, in which he relates what he saw in the land of the Turks, the Khazars, the Rus, the Bulgars, the Bashkirs, and others, their varied kinds of religion, the histories of their kings, and their conduct in many way walks of life. The letter of the king of the Bulgars reached the commander of the faithful al maktudir He asked him therein to send him someone to give him religious instruction and equate him with the laws of Islam, to build him a mosque and a pulpit so that he may carry out his mission of converting the people all over his country. He also entreated the caliph to build him a fortress to defend himself against hostile kings. Everything that the king asked for was granted by the caliph. I was chosen to read the caliph's message to the king, to hand over the gifts the caliph sent him, and to supervise the works of the teachers and interpreters of the law. The following some details about the financing of the mission and the names of the participant. And so we started on Thursday the 11th Safar of the year 309, June 21st, AD 921, from the city of Peace, Baghdad, capital of the caliphate. Now you have to remember that there are different groups of Khazars, some of whom converted to Judaism, but others who converted to Islam. Now when these Arab travelers went amongst a group of Khazars to convert them to Islam, this is what they observed. They are, in respect of their language and constitution, the most repulsive of men. Their language is like the chatter of startlings. At a day's journey, there is a village called Ardqua whose inhabitants are called cardals. Their language sounds entirely like the croaking of frogs. And these are the same people who live into Turkey today, modern day Turkey, that call themselves Muslims. Well, back in ancient times, their language sound like the language of a croaking frog. They're no different than a so-called white man that calls himself a Jew. They're converts as well. Don't forget that. Their women wear no veils in the presence of their men or strangers, nor do the women cover any part of their bodies in the presence of people. One day we stayed at the place of a guz and were sitting around. His wife was also present. As we conversed, the woman uncovered her private parts and scratched them, and we all saw it. Thereupon we covered our faces and said, May God forgive me. The husband laughed and said to the interpreter, Tell them we uncover it in your presence so that you may see and restrain yourselves, but it cannot be attained. This is better than when it is covered up and yet attainable. Adultery is alien to them, yet when they discover that someone is an adulterer, they split him in two halves. This they do by bringing together the, the branches of two trees, 
tie him to the branches and then let both trees go so that the man tied to them is torn in two. So these guys, they allow their women to walk around naked and scratch themselves. These are the so-called Turks, the white boys in Turkey today. They were known as the guzz in ancient times. The guzz do not wash themselves after defecating or urinating, nor do they bathe after seminal pollution or on other occasions. They refuse to have anything to do with water, particularly in the winter. When the guzz commander-in-chief took off his luxurious coat of brocade to don a new coat the mission had brought him, they saw that his underclothes were fraying apart from dirt. For it is their custom never, never to take off the garment they wear close to their bodies until it disintegrates. Another Turkish tribe, the Bashkirs, shave their beards and eat their lice. About pagan religions, he has little to say. But the Bashkirs' phallus cult arouses his interest for he asked through his interpreter one of the natives the reason for his worshiping a wooden penis and notes down his reply because I was issued from something similar and know of no other creator who made me now keep in mind that the Bashkirs are what you call today the modern-day Turks who live in Turkey today who call themselves Muslims they're Edomites they're so-called white boys who converted to Islam what are the famous so-called white people, Edomites, worship penises? The ancient Romans. What is this showing you that all these so-called white people, whether they call themselves Catholics, Muslims, it's all the same, man. They're all Edomites and they're all pagans. In this city, Kazaran Eitel, are Muslims, Christians, Jews, and pagans. The Jews are the king his attendants, and the Khazars of his kind. The king of the Khazars has already become a Jew in the caliphate of Harun al-Rashid, and he was joined by Jews from all the lands of Islam and from the countries of the Greeks, Byzantium. Indeed, the king of the Greeks at the present time, the year of the Hegira, 332, which is A.D. 943 and 944, has converted the Jews in his kingdom to Christianity by coercion. Thus, many Jews took flight from the country of the Greeks to Caesarea. Yet, even after their political power was broken, they left marks of Khazar Jewish influence in unexpected places and on a variety of people. Among them were the Seljuk, who may be regarded as the true founders of Muslim Turkey. Towards the end of the 10th century, this other offshoot of the Guz has moved southwards into the vicinity of Bakhara, from where they were later to erupt into Byzantine Asia Minor and colonize it. So the Guz, later on in history, became known as the Turks, the Seljuks. Those are the guys that live over in Turkey today and call themselves Muslims. That's why when Malcolm X, if you remember, when he went over to Mecca and he saw all these white Muslims, he was shocked because Elijah Muhammad never told him about that stuff. But you have white boys that converted to Islam and they were known as the Guz. They later converted to Islam. That's where that comes from. This is the history on that. On the evidence quoted in previous chapters, one can easily understand why Polish historians who are, after all, closest to the sources, are in agreement that in earlier times, the main bulk of the Jewish population originated from the Khazar country. One might even be tempted to overstate the case by claiming, as Kutshera does, that Eastern Jewry was 100% of Khazar empire. And today in the land of Israel, the majority of people whose foreparents emigrated there sometime in the mid to late 1940s, the majority of their foreparents are from Eastern Europe, which makes the majority of the so-called Jews living in that land Khazars, which would make them what? Converts. They're not the Jews.
Now keeping in mind what we just read in the 13th tribe, let's take a look at this map from the Holocaust Museum. This is a map of the Jewish population distribution circa 1933. Now keep in mind that the Jewish state of Israel was established sometime around 1948, so this is 15 years prior. This is the so-called Jews distribution throughout Europe. Now if you look at this map, particularly the lower right hand corner, you'll notice that the majority of these so-called Jews were living in Eastern Europe. Eastern Europe is where the majority of these so-called Jews were living. Now if you know anything about the land of Israel today, the majority of people that live in Israel today can trace their roots back to Eastern Europe. And that's the same thing we just read in the 13th tribe, that the Eastern Europeans are Khazars. Now let's take a look at this other map that we have. This is a map of the ancient Khazar Empire. Now if you look very carefully, the Khazar Empire is again located in Eastern Europe. Now at the very western portion of the Khazar Empire, if you look at that little red dot right there, it mentions the city of Kiev. Where is Kiev? Kiev was a part of the Soviet bloc or the Soviet Union in Russia. Today Ukraine, to be exact. That's where a lot of these so-called Jews come from. These are Khazars. These so-called white people that call themselves Jews are nothing but Khazars. And these maps illustrate and prove that what's written in the 13th tribe is actually true. So for now, I'm going to stop here in this book, The 13th Tribe. There's a ton of other quotes that I could have pulled from this book. But I didn't really do this video to actually go through each and every quote of this book. That would make the video about an hour long or longer. Basically, I just showed you some of the more popular quotes that you might hear different teachers throughout Israel refer to when they're teaching, showing you how we know that the so-called white man that calls himself a Jew is a Khazar, and so is the so-called white man that calls himself a Muslim today. I would advise brothers and sisters to go out if possible and get this book, The 13th Tribe. It's very cheap. For those of you that live in New York, you can probably find this book in Harlem. You can also get this book online from different websites, eBay. You can also get it at Amazon.com. You can also get it at Strand's Bookstore and probably others that I haven't heard of. In the future, if it be the most high's will, we're going to go through a whole bunch of other books. Until then, you brothers and sisters know where to find us. You can find this video on YouTube, Yashar Allah Library, and if they take that down, you know where to find us, www.therealjewsofblack.com. Shalom.